everybody. Welcome to my channel. Uh, Halloween fun stuff, something like that. Today I thought it would be a cool day to make some Halloween gravestones. Um, using some plywood and maybe some foam to make a couple of them. So I brought out some gravestones out here to look at. So I got some various designs, uh, some crosses and some little short ones. And uh, just various... Mostly the the tops are all different designs, and you can see I got different designs here. So let's look at what I what these are made out of. This looks like it's made out of half inch plywood. Here, most of them are, and basically half inch plywood is cheaper. And this one is made out of three quarter inch, I believe. You can see it's a little thicker. And then I actually put some ends on here that are made out of foam. So you can see they're foam. So I just added on to the corner here. I glued them on. So actually, when you look at it from the front, it actually looks like a thicker gravestone from this way. And this one actually has some, like, uh, what do you call that stuff? Spackle that you put on the wall to make it have a little bit of, um, looks more like a rough stone. And you can see it's chipped out too, which is cool because the chips actually make it look older and more spooky kind of and I think I'm gonna repaint these like uh, black to make it look like there's mold in there but this one uh, some of these I just painted sort of a grayish color and then some of them I paint I painted with this uh, spackle Sp uh, it's like stone speckle whatever they call that and made it look a couple different colors and then it's got kind of a grayish around here well, let's look at some of the other ones I got I just tried to do a lot of different designs on the tops here so they all didn't look the same and some of them are tall and some of them are smaller this one is a foam one that I made and I painted the stuff on so the font the kind of foam I use so you can see the side of it's it's got that um, on one side it's got um, like tin foil or yeah well maybe both sides it's that foam that's insulation I don't I don't know what the name of it is but I'll have to look it up this is the more uh, stiffer foam and this kind of stuff this uh, perma whatever it is this is a little bit more flexible I wouldn't use this kind of because it flexes too much but uh, this holds up pretty good sometimes the edges start to get all messed up there as opposed to the wood the edges won't flake off but I just end up repainting them to see whether the paint has flecked off there when you're trying to decide what you're gonna make them out of as far as I'm concerned, plywood is pretty cheap. You can get a, a sheet of plywood that's about um, eight by four. I don't know, under 10 bucks? I haven't bought plywood in a long time, but you can cut a lot of these out of, you can cut a lot of gravestones out of one sheet of plywood. You could probably get almost six out of that. Cause these are only like a foot wide. This one's like only a foot wide. So it's just up to you. I'm gonna um, show you how to make them out of plywood today and then you can just do the same process as far as um, making them out of foam, it's the same thing. Just cutting them with a different kind of saw. So let's go cut some, let's go design them and then cut them. We don't want to cut them first and then design them. So now that we want to figure out what our design is. So I downloaded some examples from the internet and these are just some pictures that I searched for. And what, I, what you're looking for is, you know, what design you want the top. Cause usually most gravestones are straight on the sides. So after you decide what design you want you got to draw it out so um, this is one that I made and we're gonna make something similar to this today real basic just some squares and a little uh, round thing right there so when you start um, laying out your design you basically want to um, lay out your center line first because that's going to give you the basis for where you draw all your other lines to so we're doing this uh, design that's going to look like this so basically you're just taking a straight edge or a square and it doesn't have to be um real specific it's just you know take it out and just make sure it's square when you de design it and lay out your lines the way you want it and when and when you get it the way you want it um i only do half all right, so now, now that you got your design done here, what I like to do is take a piece of plastic and tape it on there. 
and then take a magic marker and go over it, all the lines. So you go over all the lines like this and make sure to include the center line and the side line so you can line it up in the little top line here. And then when you're done with that, you, you can flip it and you get a symmetrical copy of um, this. And you, so you, what you want to do is you want to cut it out, cut out your design here. And then when you go to do it, you just trace back over it. Just like that. And then you get an exact copy of the other side. So that makes it really simple. And you can use these as a template to do more if you want to do something similar to that. So once you have this template done, you can actually use it to make other gravestones. You can um, shorten it up a little bit for another gravestone like that. Or you can actually flip it and actually use the round part as the top and make a different design. So you can actually get like two different designs out of it for other gravestones. So it's nice to have these little templates to make, you can make them faster that way. It doesn't take so much time with the measuring. All right, so now it's time to cut this thing out. So if you just have a regular, uh, wow, there's a big spider on there. Look at that spider. Okay, now that all the spiders are off my saw. So if you have a um, just a radial saw or any kind of saw will work, just go ahead and just make sure you wear safety glasses and be safe while you're doing this. So here's a quick tip when you're cutting with a, um, a radial saw. When you go to the corner, you're not going to be able to cut all the way through without cutting further over the line. So what you want to do is is just cut up just to this line and then use a little uh, handsaw and come back like this. Just use a little handsaw. A couple of swipes with that. And we'll cut that little corner down. Same with this one. See right, right there where the corner's still through. It'll cut with a little saw like this and it'll go right through there. Okay, now we got to choose what kind of paint we want. So you can choose from a lot of different colors. And um, I like to go with like an earth tone, like a gray or a tan or something like that. And that's what I did here. This was actually, I think, um, some of that flex stone paint that was real light. And then I went back over with some gray and painted it so it had some dirty spots up in here. Black doesn't, doesn't always turn out to be such a good idea because it's so dark you can't see it at night. Unless, you, unless you're planning on using a lot of lights and maybe a light for each individual and all you're gonna see is like a black silhouette and it's really hard to pick it up at night against like the darkness. So um, sometimes it's better to maybe go with a little bit lighter with, with some dark features in there so you can see because it, at night flat black is just you know, almost invisible. So um, what I did with this one is I painted it black and then I painted some white highlights in here so it sort of uh, gave it some shape so the white edges you could see a little bit better when, when there's, because I use uh, like a 100 watt light bulb on there so you can see this a bit better when you have white other than when it's just flat black like that. Alright so let's go paint some, let's go paint it and see what that looks like. So I got a first coat of paint on. Unfortunately, I did not have any gray paint. <laughs> Sorry. So I had to use tan paint. <laughs> it doesn't look that good. But you know what? At night, when it's dark, the darkness takes away color. So everything tends to be gray and black anyway. So just for the sake of not having to run out and buy gray paint. So you can still see the um, grain here, but it's not going to matter at night. If you're painting for daytime and you want it to look good, good in the daytime, maybe give it a a real thick coat of primer to get rid of the grain. But other than that, it, 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 at night, you know, you don't see it. So what I want to do now is go over with some gray. Gray paint and do some modeling to make it look uh, dirty. So um, I'll come back when I'm done with that. Okay, I did that real quick. So. What I did was, is try to get a modeled look, which is basically just a very uneven <clears throat> look. Because when things get dirty, they don't look evenly dirty. It's not like it's gonna be one thing of 
and you you know the idea is to make it look old and like trust me when when I say at night it'll look totally different I'll have to take a picture and put it on this of what it looks like at night so <clears throat> I just took some gray and randomly sprayed it <clears throat> in this pattern just kind of like over and over to it kind of had a modeled look to it and um, what I've been doing lately is so so it shows up better at night I've actually been taking a little bit of white paint and doing the edges in white because there, I have a backlight that I light with and uh, the backlight will show up better on the edges so you get sort of a better silhouette with your lighting it just depends on on how you're lighting at night or if you're lighting anyway so I'm gonna take do this and we're gonna take some little paint and put some little dirty um, some little uh, what do you call that that black stuff mold we're gonna make put some mold on this to make it even look older okay that'll be next all right this is the creative stage where we're gonna try to do some um, some um, mold paint some like dark mold on there so I got this uh, rod iron from the store it's uh, just a little acrylic paint like those craft paints are and I squirted it all out and I got my little brush here and we're just gonna just uh, randomly just paint some mold on the tops here and you now there's no real uh, exact way to do this but a lot of times mold grows on the tops of stuff that's where the moisture is but I'm doing this real quick just for the sake of the video but and I'll say this for like the 10th time at night it'll look totally different <laughs> it won't look like this because at night you haven't got the benefit of real good lighting so I'm just doing um, you know there's no real I mean you could go out and like take a picture of some mold and, and get some ideas of how that is but just for the sake of speed I'm kind of doing this kind of quick but like everything I'm really impatient with doing stuff so just uh, make it look like little trees coming off there and you can go around the whole thing and do that but that's that's like the basic idea and unless you're like a perfectionist, you know, um, if you're trying to make 20 of these headstones, it takes a while, you know. If you're doing one at a time, it'll take you a week or two. So, if you're like me and you like to do things fast and stuff and you don't have the money to go out and just buy a whole bunch of headstones from the store, you know, from the Halloween store, do this this probably took me about an hour to do so if you get faster at it you can maybe you know do 20 of them take you five or six hours if you do them all at the same time and cut them all at the same time and you know this is sort of like an art project where you just sort of do it how you think it looks best you know then you can blend a little bit after some of this paint gets a little drier you can blend a little bit you uh, thin your brush out a little bit. And then you're saying, well, it just looks like paint smudges to me, but at night, it won't. It'll look like uh, dirt and whatever. So you just sort of use your own judgment on how that's gonna look. And this, this rod iron color actually has a little bit of a greenish black color to it. So it's kind of weird that way. And try to make it look like, look like the mold sort of is, is following the path of water that has dripped down from the rain. So you look, sort of have like a little line that goes down like that. You can dot and dash, little, little dashes around. And when you're done, you look at it and you see how it looks. And if it doesn't look right, you go back and put some more little. That's basically it. So now we gotta uh, put a stake in the so it'll stick in the ground. So let's go wash our brushes and put a stake on the bottom of this. All right, so guys, now we're gonna put on our uh, put the stake on the back so we can stick it in the ground. So what you want to get is just a piece of one by two. I found these, um, these are pressure treated. They'll last a little, couple years longer than if you just use regular wood, but it doesn't really matter. 
So what you want to do is, what I measure out is about 10 inches, 10 inch piece, and um, put some angles on here, you know, uh, draw a little, some lines to the, and just cut it out into a point. And it doesn't really matter, well, this is about five inches, so I divided it up. Um, the bottom part was about five inches and the top part's about five inches, so that's just a rough sketch of how long to make this, make the point about five inches long. So um, once you get that cut out, just put two screw holes in it, and I'm going to use some uh, dry hole screws. And then you go ahead and mark out your area for the stake right there. And then I'm going to use some real short screws uh, to put this in, maybe inch and a half screw. Right in the bottom, like that. And surprisingly enough, just a, a little short stake like this will hold it pretty well. Just like that. So, just a little short stake like this actually works very well. I've used it on a lot of different ones, and it's about the right. If you want to use it a little bit longer, that's fine. These pull up really easy. And if you have a really tall gravestone, maybe you could use two of these to. Uh, put it in there so basically all finished if you wanted to you could paint the back too a lot of times I just paint the back black but so let's go stick this in the ground and see how it looks so I think it turned out pretty good um, looks a lot different than the other gravestones you can tell looks like it might be older and um, at night, like I said, a hundred times, it'll look a lot different at night. It'll stand out a bit more than the other ones. Uh, the lighter color, dark color, lighter color. What I was looking for when I did this project was to um, have a bunch of different colors so it doesn't look like, you know, 20 dark gravestones and they're all the same. So different shapes, different colors is what I was looking for. I hope this helped you out some. Um, you know, you be creative and just, you know, do your own thing. And um, this was just something so you could do it really quick and get ready for Halloween. So I hope you liked the tutorial. Uh, leave a comment if you liked my video. If you didn't like it, don't leave a comment because usually it's not a nice comment. So um, thanks for watching, guys. And I hope to be back in a couple weeks with another uh, tutorial.